Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, regenerating, renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your medications or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Let us help you change your life. Let us help you change the lives of friends, loved ones, family members, workmates today. 844-236-6010 is our number if you're on the fence about nutritional supplementation. We can help you understand why and how a good nutritional supplement, a good nutritional supplement program is so darn important. 844-236-6010 is our number. Likewise, if you have a success story or you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're going to be talking to Dr. James Ehrlich, a good friend of mine, somebody I've known for a long time, 15, going on 15 or 20 years now, about bergamot, really interesting fruit that's loaded with polyphenols, a very interesting compound that uh, has relevance for folks dealing with diabetes and me uh, something called metabolic syndrome, which is associated with blood sugar, blood sugar uh, screw-ups, they call dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, diabetes, prediabetes, etc. We'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich here in our bottom of the hour. We'll take your calls here in our second segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you... Uh, are interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised in the program or signing up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and purchase products right off the website or join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. Just click on the Join the Team link. You can also go to my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Again, we'll take your calls here in our second segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. Bottom of the hour, we'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich about Bergamot and about Bergamax, which you can purchase off my, uh, my shopping cart, brightsidehealthproducts.com, brightsidehealthproducts.com. We'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich at the bottom of the hour. All right, we are talking vitamin C, which along with vitamin A makes up the dynamic duo of topical skincare vitamins. Vitamin A and vitamin C are the two most important topical skincare vitamins, period, end of story. In fact, in my opinion, and I've been doing this a long time, 30 two years of formulating skincare products and working ha working hands-on, working with consumers, working with clients, working with patients in a compounding pharmacy setting. So when I talk about skincare, I'm talking about it as a chemist. I'm talking about it as a therapist. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about it as a formulator. I'm talking about it as a skincare professional. If you are using an anti-aging skincare product, or if you're using a plain old moisturizer, so-called moisturizers, because as we know, they don't mm, true, truly, your standard moisturizers are, aren't doing any moisturizer. But if you're using a moisturizer or a skincare product to keep your skin be uh, beautiful and young and healthy, and they're not featuring fatty vitamin C, I said fatty vitamin C, not the cheapo kind, not the uh, in ineffective uh, ascorbic acid form, which is nothing but powdered vitamin C, as important as it is internally, it's not going to do very much good for you topically. If you're not using fatty vitamin C by the name of ascorbyl palmitate or ascorbyl tetraiso, palmitate, and if you're not using retinol or perhaps retinoic acid, you are missing the boat on accessing all of the benefits that you can get from a topical skin health product. 
and you're leaving anti-aging on the table. You're leaving up regulation of connective tissue on the table. You're leaving the stimulation and the production of moisture factors on the table if you're not using fatty vitamin C and retinol on a regular basis. Now, both vitamin C and vitamin A are, uh, are very important internally as well as topically. They're not just a topical vitamin. They're also important internally. We've talked about this a lot. But there's some problems associated with getting vitamin A into the system, and there's some problems associated with keeping vitamin C in the system. Vitamin A needs, uh, requires fat, solubil uh, fat processing. You need a gallbladder, liver, digestive acids, pancreas. Intestinal health has to be tip-top in order to maximize vitamin A absorption, which is, comes in through the intestine. In case of vitamin C, it's water-soluble, so you urinate it out. You excrete it on a regular basis. So keeping your blood, blood levels of vitamin C high enough and, and keeping blood levels of vitamin A high enough, these are not necessarily an easy thing. And remember, the skin is the last place that the body will deliver these nutrients in the case of deficiencies, which are pretty common. In fact, you can pretty much assume that unless you're supplementing, unless you're in tip-top health, health shape, you're going to be deficient in vitamin A and vitamin C. And you can bypass some of the partitioning of vitamin A and vitamin C into the spleen and the liver and the adrenal glands and the lungs and the heart. This is where the body will deliver these vitamins first. The skin will get them last. But you can bypass some of this partitioning away from the skin by using vitamin A and vitamin C topically. That's why they're so important to use in a topical skin health, and skin health product. Yesterday, we talked about vitamin C, which is a growth vitamin like vitamin A. It's also a protection vitamin. It's UV protection, protectant, protects against the sun. Not in a sunblock way, not in a drug kind of way like octomethoxycinamate or oxybenzone or octocrylene, these, these uh, hard to pronounce kind of technical scientific chemicals that are really not very nice, nice to the skin or nice to the body. You know what would happen if you drank your octomethoxycinamate? You'd have to get your stomach pumped or you'd be dead. Same with oxybenzone, which is super carcinogenic, by the way. Oxybenzone, also its derivatives, avobenzone, also known as Parsol. You'll see these in the fancy schmancy sun protection products. Very ugly chemicals, very toxic chemicals. And I know they're only in your sun protection product at trace amounts, 0.1%, 0.2%. But still, why would anybody want to rub that stuff on their skin? What kind of dermatologist would recommend rubbing a, a well-known, not just a, it's not just an, a, a guess that oxybenzone is associated with cancer. It is one of the most carcinogenic substances in all of skincare. Why would a dermatologist recommend that you rub on a carcinogenic substance on your skin? Hmm, maybe he doesn't understand much about the skin. Certainly doesn't understand much about skin care, skin care chemicals, skin care products. In any case, vitamin C will get you sun protection without toxicity in a non-pharmaceutical, non-protection fashion. And yesterday we talked about how vitamin C offers protection from uh, topical assaults from chemicals like, like chlorine. In fact, even the toxic... Sun protection chemicals can be deactivated at least partially by using vitamin C. So if you are stuck using a sun protection chemical like oxybenzone or octocrylene or octomethoxycinamate, which is found in the majority of sunscreen products, at least put on some topical vitamin C afterwards. And if you are stuck using these ingredients, the toxic sun protection or sunscreening ingredients, wash it off as soon as you come out of the sun and don't put it on your skin unless you are going to be out in the sun. Oh yeah, the sun can actually make these compounds more carcinogenic and more toxic. That's a whole nother story. We can talk about that on another day. As we said yesterday, after we bathe in chlorine, we take a chlorine bath, a bleach bath in a swimming pool, or after we shower in chlorine, take a a bleach shower, or even after we wash our faces with bleach or tap water or chlorine. And I say bleach because chlorine is bleach. After we, uh, after we wash with chlorine from tap water or showers or bathe in it in a pool, it's a good idea to put on some topical fatty vitamin C. In addition to being a protection vitamin, vitamin C is also, like vitamin A, a growth molecule. It turns on the growth of all the good stuff, connective tissue, wrinkle-fighting connective tissue. All right, got more to say about vitamin C and vitamin A. We'll save that for another day. We're going to take your phone calls when we come back. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back 
on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. We're going to talk about metabolic syndrome at the bottom of the hour with Dr. James Ehrlich. And we'll talk about using bergamot. Not bergamot oil, mind you, but a very interesting form of bergamot for metabolic syndrome, a, a, uh, a health challenge that is associated with blood sugar problems. Metabolic syndrome encompasses symptomology like high blood pressure, changes in blood fats, Alzheimer's and dementia issues, um, kidney disease, osteoporosis, autoimmunity even. It's a, there's a good possibility autoimmunity is associated with metabolic syndrome. You know what? Pretty much all degenerative health crises have some aspect of uh, dis glycemia, messed up blood sugar. So technically speaking, at least the way I look at it, pretty much all chronic degenerative diseases can be thought of, at least partially, as the manifestation of metabolic syndrome. We'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich about using bergamot for metabolic syndrome. There's some really interesting literature out. In fact, I was so impressed, I started selling, I'm, I am selling my bergamot product on brightsidehealthproducts.com. And I'm also, uh, if you're interested in using vitamin C, topical vitamin C, just as an anti-aging product or as a moisturizing product or as a healing product or as a skin health product, of course, you can head over to truthtreatments.com. Those are my new skin health products that I just put out on the market, formulated them about a year ago, and I've been giving them out as samples for the last year. Now you can purchase them off truthtreatments.com. We'll continue talking vitamin A and vitamin C for uh, next few episodes anyway, as we continue discussing skin health on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Craig from North Carolina, what is going on? Welcome to the bright side. Well, thank you, Ben. I appreciate you taking my call. What's going on, Craig? Uh, well, my brother, he's 72, uh, told me he was taking levothyroxine. Best-selling drug in America. So he's oh. in good company. Oh, okay. Well, What's... uh... I gave him a hard time about it because he always said he wasn't going to get on medication. So, uh, he, you want some he ideas? Quit, he quit taking it. He just stopped? Did he do anything yeah. else? Did he do anything no. else for his thyroid? No, sir. Okay. Let me give you a couple ideas that you want to do pretty quickly, okay? Thyroid yeah. regulates. Yeah, whatever you think he could. Uh, okay. All right. I'll give you a couple ideas right off the bat. First of all, recognize that because the thyroid regulates everything in the body, regulates the digestive system and the heart and muscle building and brain health and all of blood sugar issues, all of these are regulated by the thyroid. Once the thyroid breaks down, guess what? You're likely to be dealing with every single health challenge you can name. In fact, I would venture to say there isn't a health challenge, long-term chronic health challenge that doesn't have an aspect of of hypo or perhaps even hyper thyroidism. Synthroid is notorious and levothyroxine is a form of synthroid, a generic form of synthroid. Uh, levothyroxine and synthroid have a reputation, well-deserved reputation in the world of pharmacy as being very ineffective and not only being ineffective but uh, in being unstable so that the dose always has to be un adjusted in the body. Uh, it's very difficult for the manufacturers to make an appropriate dose of levothyroxine. So for many reasons, it's just a really lousy drug. If you have a thyroid problem, the first thing you want to do is backtrack. To, this is going to come as no surprise to regular listeners. The first thing you want to do is backtrack to the digestive system. There's always going to be a digestive problem associated with thyroid problems. Uh, good bacteria, probiotic bacteria. Make thyroid hormone. Make active thyroid hormone. By the way, Synthroid is inactive or weak thyroid hormone. It's not the real deal. It's the weak form of it. Uh, you need good bacteria probiotics to activate thyroid hormone. Make sure he's on a, the Biolumin Nightly Essence and eating fermented foods. Also using digestive support, the ultimate enzymes, for example, apple cider vinegar after all his meals. He may want to go get some HCL drops from a pharmacy. The Fucoid Z not only is great for the digestive system, it's also a source of iodine. I'm going to talk about iodine here in a sec because there's a lot of misunderstandings about iodine. Also Doing a food diary and eliminating problem foods is very important. Eating less food is also very important, less calories. Stabilizing the blood sugar is the second step that you want to take for all thyroid health issues. We're going to talk to Dr. Ehrlich in a few minutes about metabolic syndrome. You may want to consider using Bergamot, Bergamax. You can find out about that at brightsidehealthproducts.com. Also, the Sweeties from Longevity, And, of course, just, just limiting his intake of breads and pastas and fruit juices and desserts and, and fruits. Yeah. He, he's done that? 
Yeah, he's done that. Yeah. Good. That's it. He's on the right track there. Continue doing it, though, if he's, if he's already doing it. More protein and more coconut oil is a great way to wean yourself off of uh, sugary kinds of foods, blood sugar spiking foods. Let me say a, real, a quick thing about iodine. Iodine is an essential mineral for uh, the production of thyroid hormone. But if you've got a messed up thyroid, if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease, for example, or you're dealing with adrenal health issues, which can mess up the thyroid, or blood sugar issues, or for that matter, digestive issues, iodine's not going to help you. And any healthcare professional who tells you just take iodine for your thyroid, in my opinion, should go back to biochemistry 101 because it's much more than just iodine. What's more, if your thyroid gland is messed up, you can take all the iodine you want. It's not going to help. Iodine is for supporting the production of the hormone, thyroxin, thyroid hormone. But if the gland itself is being attacked from the immune system, and, and most thyroid problems have that component involved, or if the gland is just pooped out because of uh, adrenal health problems or blood sugar problems or digestive problems, iodine is not going to help. And that's why people can take all the iodine they want, and it doesn't make their thyroid magically improve. In fact, sometimes they take too much iodine, (laughs) although you have to take a lot of iodine to take too much. The point is, it's not just an iodine problem if you're hypothyroid. And it's not just a synthroid problem. Not just just giving yourself the, the, uh, the hormone isn't going to make your gland more uh, healthier. you got to make the structure healthy, the gland healthy, and that's done through digestive support, all the things we just talked about, as well as blood sugar support. Uh, and then uh, if you want to do a couple of other things, well, that's, that'll probably get you right there. If you want to do one more thing, take care of your adrenal glands, and that means slow, deep breathing and relaxing the body, slowing the body down. Got to take a couple more calls, Craig. That's a lot of good information for you. God bless you and your brother. I hope we helped you. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. Steve, got about a minute. What's up, my friend? Hello there. Thank you. I hey. just had a couple questions. We were trying to get a hold of the tocotrienol yes. the E, and we're yes. having an issue. I don't know if there's a place you could recommend where we Yes. Could. Go to, uh, well, let me look it up right here, and we'll get you some tocotrienols. I get it. You know, I've, I, we're very fortunate here in Colorado. we got all these different health food stores. Yeah, you go to tocotrienols. It's all over the website, all over the web. Uh, here, just go to, uh, go to Amazon. Tocotrienols, vitamin E, huge selection at great low prices. Okay, Amazon. And just another one on the on the magnesium is the yeah. is the uh, liquid form better uh, than the uh, liquid the tablet. Y- Yeah, yeah. Liquids are always better. Always, always, always. That way you bypass any issues with the digestive system, which are pretty much ubiquitous. Everybody's got digestive health problems. So you bypass all that with the liquids. Liquids first, solid second. I'm going to get one more call in, okay, Steve? Can I just do one last? um, On the the supplements, uh, uh, post-dated supplements, uh, if they're sealed, uh, I mean, will they last a while? They will last a while, but it's on a continuum, meaning that over the course of time, every day they'll break down more. But you probably won't notice it. You know, even if six months or a year later, you're not going to notice. Certainly, you're not going to hurt yourself. They just won't be as potent. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Take care, buddy. All right, Carl, Truth Raider. Got about uh, 45 seconds here. What's up, man? Happy Friday there, Ben. Uh, Thank you, Truth Raider. Going on an unscheduled camping trip for the summer. But I wanted to find out, what did you find on that box of, of cosmetics? Oh, it was silly, 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 silly. I don't like talking about silly stuff, but suffice it to say that if you're uh, buying a skincare product in a supermarket or a mall or a drugstore, you're probably dealing with silliness. I don't want to get into too many details, Truth Raider. Send me an email, give me a call, and we'll talk personally about that. Okay. All right. God bless you, man. All right. That's all, uh, that's all the time we got for calls, but we're going to talk to Dr. James Ehrlich in our next segment about metabolic syndrome and how you can reduce blood pressure, lower blood pressure, and especially how you can lower your cholesterol and blood fats without drugs by using a very interesting fruit called bergamot. All right. We're back. On the Bright Side, Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. If you miss a program, they're all up at brightsideben.com. Four plus years of good health information, unique health information archived at brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com, which I'm doing with George Norrie, and pharmacistben.com. Thank you to my webmaster, Robert Lundgren, who does such a fine job at pharmacistben.com. Okay. I know we rip on the medical model here on this program a lot, but there are a few good guys in the world of medicine, and my next guest is one of those good guys. I've known Dr. Ehrlich for pushing 15 years now, and uh, the guy talks a lot of sense, makes a lot of sense, and he's not... 
he's not like one of the the the, the cutters, if you will, the guys who believe in just cutting and drugging and medically manipulating the body to keep it healthy. He's going to talk today about something called bergamot, a really neat fruit that's used for, that can be used for metabolic syndrome. There's a lot of really cool literature, especially regarding cholesterol and blood fats, uh, around the active ingredients in bergamot, which are called polyphenols. Dr. Ehrlich will tell us all about that. Greetings. Welcome to The Bright Side, Doc. How are you doing? Dr. Ehrlich. <coughs> Dr. Yes, Jim. Hi. Hey, good to talk to you on the air, man. Well, it's quite a pleasure. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for coming on. So, bergamot is one of the most bizarre fruits. I guess it's a fruit, even though it's not an edible fruit. Tell us a little bit about bergamot, and tell us a little bit about why bergamot is not necessarily the same thing as bergamot oil. And then we're going to get into, uh, and then we'll get into some of the stuff about metabolic syndrome. So, let's talk a little bit about the fruit itself. Yeah. So this is this is a fruit, the citrus. Uh, it is endemic to the southern uh, Italian uh, coastal area called Calabria, uh, which is right across the Strait of Messina from Sicily. Uh, and it looks like uh, an orange to some extent or uh, has the color of a lemon, much more bitter. And um, the peel of the fruit has been used for generations as the oil of bergamot or essence of bergamot in Earl Grey tea and also in the perfume industry. So when you visit the plants in this uh, Calabria area, uh, they're wonderfully fragrant smelling places where all major perfume houses uh, have a presence. Uh, but it's the pulp, uh, the inner core, the pulp, and the inner lining that's called the albedo that has uh, really the very high polyphenol uh, concentration, a very unique polyphenol in very high concentration that what? have been concentrated by a group of food scientists uh, and cardiologists uh, in that region. Now, now, let me ask a couple things real quick. First of all, you said the albedo. Is that A-L-B-I-D-O? It's actually A-L-B-E-D-O. And that is the, that's not just, that's, that's the, the rind? Could you, would, would that be the, the rind? Inner, yeah, the rind, right, the inner lining. Yeah. Okay, that's that white part, Al, probably Al, from white part, right. white part, right, that's, that comes from the Latin for white. Okay, and that's where the active material is that's doing all the work, the heavy lifting in and, terms and of... Pulp, and the pulp itself. And the pulp itself. And these are distinguished from the oil. I've been using the oil for many years in the skincare world, but that's not the same thing, right? It's not the same. The, I mean, the oil does have a little bit of antiseptic effects and has uh, other uh, health effects, maybe a little anti-inflammatory but it doesn't have the concentrations uh, of the amino acids and polyphenols that are found much deeper in the pulp. And, you know, it's really only been about 10 years that uh, this group of scientists have really characterized all the polyphenols and built a laboratory around this fruit uh, for its benefits in cholesterol and metabolism and the like. Um, yeah. So it's just fairly new field. I've been, I've been in, to get ready for this interview, I've been doing a lot of research on uh, bergamot polyphenols, and there seems to be in the last five or six years just a, an explosion in literature that talks about the benefits for uh, the benefits of, uh, of the bergamot pulp extract, I guess you'd call it. I hope that's correct. For all, all kinds of different things, metabolic syndrome, impotence, blood pressure issues, et cetera, blood fats, as you mentioned. What, is, what accounts for this explosion in the literature? Well, this group of scientists uh, receives about a 30 million euro grant from the Italian government who really wants to foster the industry. Uh, it's a fairly poor area in, in, in this Calabria region, and yet there's a thousand growers of this, of this fruit. So I think um, what they did is they built uh, one of the most advanced laboratories in, in Europe, and uh, in their interregional center for food health and safety, they've really taken this very seriously. So we're we're publishing about every month or two in major journals, primarily in the area of cholesterol uh, lowering, blood sugar lowering, uh, changes in abdominal fat, uh, the, this metabolic syndrome, this pre-diabetic condition that affects about uh, seventy million Americans. Uh, 
and the liver manifestation of the metabolic syndrome that called fatty liver disease. Oh, wow. Uh, that's, which uh, is That's a th- 100 million people. 100 million Americans yeah, have just that. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and a lot of kids have it, too. It's really a reflection of our current trend that you've been addressing of, you know, high-sugar diets and, mm-hmm. and sedentary living. So uh, all the things that you're promoting... Uh, as healthy living on the on the radio show apparently has not reached some of these people that have fatty liver disease, and, uh, yeah. and fatty so li- this is a so this is something that we're very excited about, and we'll probably try to make uh, Bergamet a drug for this condition so that involves FDA uh, pathways. They're actually looking to make the polyphenols into a pharmaceutical, right? That's the plan. Interesting for for the indication of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease of which right now there are no drugs approved, but there are about five uh, in the process of uh, in some stage of, uh, of FDA uh, investigation. So you're saying the polyphenols that you can get from the Bergamax product, they are so powerful that they're going to be a pharmaceutical for, for, fatty, for use for fatty liver yes, disease? Uh, I, I pre- after we published in this area of 107 patients with both metabolic syndrome and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, we were able to show in four months uh, unparalleled improvement in both liver structure and function uh, in these patients, never seen before with any drug or supplement. And I presented the findings at the uh, annual meeting of the American College of Gastroenterology in October uh, and then put out a press release uh, requesting uh, liver specialists in the United States in this area to confirm and to extend our work, and it attracted the uh, head of the uh, fatty liver network. It's called the NASH network, and the um, individuals who are involved with FDA approval of anything uh, in this area. And so uh, the, those uh, liver specialists came with us to uh, Italy to meet with all the scientists and are very excited uh, about designing the appropriate studies that will meet the approval of the FDA. So we're going to begin that process fairly soon. What, what exactly are polyphenols? Well, polyphenols, uh, which are you know, Doc, you got to get... Uh, Doc, I'm sorry. I hate to see this. we got to take a break. Hang on to that question, okay? And then I want to talk about right. some of the specifics, how the bergamot is actually used for fatty liver disease and also for metabolic syndrome. We're talking to Dr. Very James good. Ehrlich about bergamot and bergamax. If you're interested in purchasing the bergamax, head over to my website, brightsidehealthproducts.com, brightsidehealthproducts.com, and you can order. It's only 45 bucks for a month's supply. You can order it right off the web, brightsidehealthproducts.com. back on the bright side talking to Dr. James Ehrlich about bergamot and about some of the benefits of bergamot. Before we get into talking about how you use this stuff specifically, Doc, what are exactly are polyphenols? Well, you probably know more about it than I do personally, but uh, polyphenols have a certain chemical structure. That, uh, they're substances that are found in, in grapes and olive oil and certain uh, nuts and berries. Um, and they have what's called a, a phenolic structure. But importantly, uh, they've been uh, uh, shown to have a whole host of beneficial effects on metabolism, on inflammation, and, uh, and now in cholesterol areas. So, um, uh, you know, we're seeing benefits of obviously certain types of teas that are very heavily concentrated in polyphenols and mm. grapeseed and, green tea? And, and olive oil. So we, we see it in various things. The stuff in green tea, the uh, epigallocatechin uh, polyphenol? Is that a polyphenol? Right. That would be nice. a polyphenol. That's right. Okay. So polyphenols in general, they're found in nature. Uh, flavonoids, those are polyphenols, bioflavonoids, et cetera, what they call bioflavonoids. Yes. Okay, and they have multiple health benefits. So specifically, in addition to fruits and vegetables, and this is one of the reasons why you want to be eating produce, and especially vegetables, you can use the bergamot, the bergamot uh, albedo, as you called it, albedo extract, as a supplement. That's now, right. This, and so this group of scientists concentrated to a very high level those particular polyphenols that um, – been shown to lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar, improve vessel health, uh, which is very important. We we measure. Did you say mental? Did you say mental function? 
What's that? You said, you said vessel health? Blood vessel health? Yeah, the arterial okay. arch, artery health, right. So for people who have endothelial problems, aneurysms, that kind of thing? Well, uh, I'm talking about just your regular health uh, of the vessels. The lining of, of your vessels control how risk factors cause uh, plaque formation. The lining, called the endothelium, is, uh, has the surface area of six tennis courts in the average male. Wow. Uh, 150, 175 pound male. So we're talking about this huge surface area that really governs how everything from toxins and cigarette smoking to high cholesterol and high blood pressure interact and cause disease in the vessel. And if you can improve the endothelial health, uh, and it is improved in various um, health foods and other things, but if you can show improvement, um, that's a key to a benefit. So the message is that even if you don't have high cholesterol or high blood pressure or high blood sugar or fatty liver disease, uh, this Bergamot product uh, can be a great benefit for anybody, I would suggest, over the age of 45, just to improve vessel health. And that itself is, is a reason enough to consider making an investment in your health with this uh, all-natural um, extract from this bergamot fruit. Well, it's all about circulation, right? So generally speaking, you could say that the bergamot, the bergamax, and the bergamot extract are pro-circulation. They improve the flow of blood through the... Through exactly. The- they're antioxidants, and they're anti-inflammatory, and they... Uh, by various mechanisms, including those uh, mechanisms, they improve circulatory health or vessel health. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly right. Yes. So I'm I'm guessing there probably be benefits for dementias as well and movement disorders, brain health so issues. We're not correct? looking at that now. Um, we haven't proven uh, benefits for uh, you know neurologic benefits. Uh, we have shown, for example, substantial improvements in many areas. Uh, from skin health, so photo aging. We have a publication on inhibition of uh, skin aging, which is very important. Uh, that's nice. part of the process that leads to skin cancer, as well as just wrinkling and all these things, to improvements in, in erectile function. Our latest work shows very, very significant improvements in diabetics with erectile dysfunction, and, it's, and, and that's because of the improvement in endothelial function or, you know, vessel health. Um, and that would be important for anybody who's middle-aged who's suffering from that condition, not only diabetic. So um, it really, uh, when you affect the fundamental processes uh, of anti, uh, free radical generation and inflammation and those processes that govern vessel health, it's not surprising to have many systems that can benefit from one product. Well, it's all about the circulation. If something's going to improve blood flow, then it's, you're entering in the realm of a panacea, no? I mean, everything's circulation. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, what know, would not be benefit? What, what, what wouldn't benefit? What would not benefit? From, I mean, everything benefits well, from the circulation. Everybody would benefit. Um, but uh, when, I, when I think about the most benefit and where the benefit would be for people uh, who don't have other alternatives. I would say metabolic syndrome, which is the, um, you know, having risk factors like an expanding waistline and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and um, high blood glucose, that's the metabolic syndrome, this insulin resistance state. Uh, Certainly fatty liver disease because there's no other options for people. Um, And... um, So, and high cholesterol, and very importantly, um, since we've been able to show equivalent lowering of cholesterol and better improvements of HDL, the good cholesterol, and better lowering of LDL, uh, excuse me, triglycerides than any statin, uh, for those people, and I think that many of them, uh, uh, many of your audience would be concerned about taking a drug, statin, to lower cholesterol, well... We've uh, shown that the LDL lowering is equivalent. It doesn't deplete coenzyme Q, and there's no no side effects. Uh, Have you heard of? And importantly, statins tend to raise blood sugar, as you know, and yep. some people get frank diabetes. 
this lowers uh, blood sugar by an average of 23%. So um, wow. I have to say uh, you can make a very strong case for using this instead of a statin. But if you need to be on a statin, and there are some people who um, have heart, had heart attacks that should be on statins, we've shown that you can lower the dose of statins, which will lower side effects by adding the, the, this Bergamax um, product. So, so um, I would, you know, in that case, I would, I would speak to your physician, but I think your physician will be amazed that they do the advanced laboratory work, cholesterol fractionation and various cholesterol tests. They'll be amazed at the improvements that they will see with a lower dose of statin with, uh, with this uh, product added to it. Have you heard about the cholesterol vaccine, by the way, the LDL vaccine? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, a colleague of mine is working on that. Um, and so um, this is an exciting area. So let's cut to the chase. We only have about a minute or two. What can somebody expect and how soon can they expect it once they purchase the Bergamax off brightsidehealthproducts.com and start using it? How much should they take and what, can they, what kind of results can they expect and how soon? Well, they should take it twice a day uh, in the... Uh, 650 milligrams that you have on your um, website. It's a 38% concentration, a very, very high concentration that you that you have uh, for your audience. Uh, they should expect uh, improvements in in triglycerides within a couple of weeks. On the other hand, we really like people to give it at least a three month trial. Uh, before measuring uh, cholesterol and blood sugar and those kind of things, because in some people it takes a little bit longer. But remember, we're talking about a lifetime of benefits and illnesses like heart disease that take a long time uh, mm. to develop. Um, and um, so uh, we, we urge people not to, um, you know, try something for a few weeks and, and, uh, and, and see how they're doing. But really, three months, I would say, is the time period that you'll see substantial improvements. And a lot of people are losing weight with this. So, you know, wow. the people are losing, especially belly fat, which is uh, always, and the dangerous type of belly fat. We call this uh, visceral abdominal fat. Oh, yeah. I want to We've talk shown about that this is improved. I want to talk about visceral fat. And I want to talk about blood sugar. We're out of time. Can we get you on here in a couple of weeks, maybe? And we'll, well talk about my pleasure. Yeah. Oh, good it'd, deal. It'd, All right. It'd be Thanks. Great to talk to you again, Ben. Dr. Ehrlich, thank you so, so much. One of the good guys, Dr. Ehrlich, one of the good docs. I appreciate, your, appreciate you coming on, and we'll get you on here in a couple of weeks, Doc. Thanks so much, All buddy. Right, thank you so much. All right, that was Dr. James Ehrlich talking about Bergamax and Bergamot, the albedo, not the oil. And you can purchase Bergamax off my shopping cart at brightsidehealthproducts.com if you're dealing with metabolic syndrome or fatty liver disease or you just want an overall health product, brightsidehealthproducts.com. Bergamax is only 45 bucks for a month's supply. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.